This might suck. It's been a bit since I've made a video. Uh, last one was in January. The last few months in Toronto have been uh, very cold, very gray, constantly overcast. And we have not had a lot of sun going on. It hasn't been the nicest time to go out and shoot. And that still holds true to the current moment that I am in. I keep wanting to make stuff and it keeps being not a great time to try and make stuff but I thought I'd give it a try just to get back into the swing of things so I've got a couple little bulk rolled things of HP5 and uh, we're gonna shoot them at 3200 push it and developing see what we get because we're under a winter storm warning for the second time in a, in a week so here we go What a stupid time to be able to film camera. Ugh. Everything I own is getting soaked. Uh, this camera. This camera has a bunch of snow on it now. And, uh, somebody's bound to be like, you should take better care of your gear. Shut up, I'll do what I want. It's Canada, it's the winter. I'll destroy a million cameras if it helps me take a good picture. That was thunder and lightning now. All right, I finished both of these two small rolls of HP5, and yeah, I'm done. I am done anyways. The thunder and lightning's a bit much. All right, let's see if I remember how to do this. I uh, haven't developed in a little bit. I have some fresh Ilford DDX developer that I'm gonna mix at a ratio of one to four, and I'm gonna develop this HP5 at 20 minutes to push it to 3200. All right, moment of truth. Mm. Oh, we got something. Oh, we got quite a bit, actually. This could be something. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Roll number two. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right, let's see how this stuff scans. I've got a uh, slide snap strip scanner that was very, very graciously sent to me um, after I did a video like focusing on one a year or so ago. Uh, so it's really just like a, a DSLR kind of camera scanning setup uh, device and it advances and everything. Um, so that's how I scan a lot of my stuff at home. Here we go, HP5 shot at 3200, pushed for 20 minutes in DDX, and you know what? I am so happy with how like every shot on this these two little rolls came out. They're not all perfect, but uh, I, I think it captures exactly what I was trying to capture and just the weather and being out there and just what I can get away with in very, very low light. It's so cool to see these come out the way that I really was hoping that they would. 
The negatives are really thin, but the amount that I can get out of these from a scan here is just, I'm so pleased with it. The lens was so wet that I'm getting these crazy like halos out from the street lamps and everything um, because I couldn't clean it off fast enough. These two little rolls were shot in a Canon EOS A2. I put it on uh, shutter priority mode. So I set the shutter speed of 1 30th of a second because I didn't really want to go any lower than that. And then the camera determined the aperture value when I was shooting. And that was pretty much just shooting like wide open. Pretty crazy to see uh, just the amount of flexibility in this film and the amount of grain even looks really good for how much I pushed it. So award-winning combination it looks like hp5 some ddx uh, one to four 20 minutes push it at 3200 film pretty happy with it whoa i thought maybe that was the whole video i would develop the photos and take them in the snow not in that order but now i'm in the dark room here at lift the liaison of independent filmmakers of toronto uh, doing more and more videos involving the facilities here. Link in the description down below for information. Uh, amazing Toronto resource, biased. I work here, that's what I've been up to a lot over the last few months. I thought, hey, let's take one of the shots from the negative and uh, do a, a quick darkroom print from it and see what we get. I'm still kind of new to darkroom printing. I haven't done it a lot and I've just been trying to learn it a little more over the last few months along with the help of my friend Alex. I got some Dectol developer, which is uh, the concentrate. It's mixed from powder form, so I'm gonna dilute it one to one. So one part water to one part Dectol, and it's gonna go in the tray here so that uh, when I take the paper from the photo enlarger, put it in the tray, we tray develop it, and then it will go into the stop bath in the middle tray, the fix in the third tray, and then it will go into the wash in a fourth tray here. I can't show all of this process with the lights on because uh, some of it has to happen in the dark, but I can use the red light so that I can see what I'm doing myself. We have some Milford Multigrade 4 RC Deluxe 8x10 paper, so I'm just gonna use some of this. These are the photo enlargers here at Lyft. There's two of them. Uh, this is the one that I prefer to use. We have a bunch of lenses for it and different uh, negative holders. There's also negative holders and accessories for this one. This is more friendly for color because you can adjust your cyan, magenta, and yellow on it. But this one I do uh, a lot for black and white photo enlargers. It can go up and down. It's got this motor. I'm just going to uh, take the negatives that I've sleeved up. I'm gonna get a piece of paper. I'm just gonna put it where the light shines along with the negatives on top. We're gonna do a contact sheet. Contact sheets are fun. Everybody loves the look of a contact sheet. I get to use safe lights for this. So orangish or red safe lights are fine to use with black and white photo paper uh, for the most part because they have such a low, 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 low sensitivity to that wavelength of light. So you can handle the photo paper in environments where you have the red safe lights on, which is why you see that in movies all the time when they're printing in the dark for black and white images and they have safe lights on. Uh -huh. Ready. So we've got this ready to go. The RC paper in the Dectol, the one-to-one -one solution, really it only needs to be in the tray to develop for about a minute, a minute and a half, something like that. It, it happens very fast and you can see it happen right before your eyes. Uh, I'm just gonna double check that things look good here in the light. So throw that there, our paper. We put a piece of glass on top just to keep the negatives flat against the paper here. So I'm gonna take out our piece of paper and I want to expose onto the more glossy feeling side here. Slide it underneath the negative. So let's go for 20 seconds and we'll hit start. Cover up our paper, 
Go back in the box. And uh, hopefully you can see, we'll flip this around. I'm doing this in the dark, I can't look at the screen. Uh, all right, and let's throw it in. We just wanna kinda give it a shake, just shuffle it around. And you might be able to see that uh, come up and turn pretty black pretty quickly. So, not great. It's not much of anything, but you can see like the edges of the film there and you can see the edge code on the film. All right, uh, so not, not 20 seconds for the contact sheet, but now we know 20 seconds is very wrong. Okay, I did another contact sheet at 10 seconds. So I have to go less time to make it a brighter image because the negative is so thin. So uh, it is still not quite there yet. I'm gonna work with some multi-grade filters and these are numbered filters that allow you to increase or decrease the contrast when you're printing. So three and a half is uh, like the neutral, the middle ground, and it goes up to five or all the way down to zero on this set and they're numbered and it goes like one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. The lower the number on the filter, the less the contrast. The higher the number on the filter, the more the contrast. So we're gonna throw a two on the lens and see what happens. All right, we'll try 10 seconds again using a two filter, a number two filter to hopefully decrease this. And, uh into all right already looking like i can see something on this at least there is not enough contrast or at least we need to expose for longer, but we are seeing real frames. It's just our black areas aren't black. This is no filter at 10 seconds, and this is a number two filter at 10 seconds. So we can see the filter makes a big, big difference. So now I'm gonna try and print one of the frames as a full size print. Uh, so this is the 35 negative holder for this photo enlarger. And I'm going to take out the strip that I need from here, printing it with the emulsion side facing down of the film. This is where we use an easel. So now uh, I can move these pieces around to frame the actual paper once it's ready to go. For now, I just have a, a piece of paper that um, I've just trashed. It's already been exposed to the lights. And we have these, which are for focusing. I put it here and it allows me to see how focused I am once I have the light on in the dark, uh, the light of the photo enlarger, and then I can manipulate it until I have sharp focus and I just focus to the grain of the film. Now we're gonna make a test strip in order to have an idea of what my exposure should be for this print. So I'm gonna just tear up a little piece of paper from the box in the dark. I'm going to do a number of exposures and I'm going to move the booklet each time. So for example, if I did it in intervals of two seconds, first I would expose this area as two, then two again, then two again, then two again, then two again. The entire paper would have been exposed, but different areas will have been exposed for longer. So the portion that is exposed to two seconds last is only exposed for two seconds, but the next area up will be exposed for two twice, so four. So two, four, six, eight, 10, or however many times you do it. Think about it, it makes sense. For this test strip, I'm gonna do it in intervals of three seconds. 
So this is our test strip. It was exposed three seconds each time, and you can see it in various zones here to get an idea. And I can see that uh, it doesn't really get dark until the very kind of top one. So I believe that is uh, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. So around 18. So if I do another test strip and expose the entire thing for 15 seconds and then add two seconds onto each one, that should give us a better idea of where I stand in terms of the exposure. Test strip number two. So this one I did a little bit differently. I exposed the entire thing for 15 seconds and then I covered and added two second intervals. So this being the longest exposed and going down from there. Probably around 22 seconds, this area here looks okay to me. So I think I'm gonna do an entire test sprint at 22 seconds and see how that looks. I've definitely made a print uh, from this negative. So it's uh, an interesting shot anyways because the focus is just a little soft, but I do really kind of like the look, uh, especially because like there's clearly just so much uh, like snow on the lens or uh, the lens was starting to really get wet. But there is something going on here at least to print from, which is so cool to see. Now it's not a perfect print of course, because I mean, this is my first attempt at it. My borders are a little wonky, but um, I really don't hate it at all. So in order to really see if there's that much more information that I wanna go digging for in like the bright light in the image or like the, the snow that's on top of the dumpster beside the doorway, uh, I did another just little test strip for 32 seconds uh, to go even darker to try and see kind of if there is much in those areas and there is really not too much. But 32 seconds on the test strip does give me much darker like shadow areas. You can go so intense with printing in terms of techniques like dodging and burning that allow you to make certain areas darker or certain areas brighter, but I'm probably not gonna dive too deeply into that in this video because uh, it's already getting late and I didn't even think I was gonna print or try to print from these negatives in the first place at all. Let's just do a print at, uh, I'm thinking, just straight up 30 seconds. And we'll see how that looks. And maybe that's it. Maybe that's just the print, the little print that I make for this video. Not bad, I, I like it a lot. Uh, it's darker than this one, which is maybe like a little more detail, but there's not a lot to get out of this negative. Um, so mostly just bringing down those shadows is making it look that much better, I think. I like this print, I could have spent, you know, like more hours on this. Uh, it, burning in some of the areas, like the, the light and the, the snow on top of the dumpster, maybe making the shadows darker even, just keep going and going with it. But uh, as I said, it was getting late when I was putting this together and I didn't want to go super crazy with it, but it, it's just fun to be able to put together a print like this and the, the steps to go through and, and start to see what looks good and, and what areas you can experiment with. If we compare it against my scan, obviously the scan I just, can have such a crazy amount of flexibility and all I have to do is adjust a slider in Lightroom. There is more information in that light above the door and the, the snow on top of the dumpster could be like a little bit darker to bring out just a little more detail in those areas. But overall, I I think that the, the shots look good again for how much everything was underexposed when I was shooting it. The camera did a great job. I did a great job. I like how the scans look. I, I like how it developed and came out and I like the the print that I put together for it so yeah 
whole process, beginning from farm to table, uh, from roll to print, all in one video. Wow. Well, there you go. Sometimes you can shoot film in the dark and push it developing and, and print it in the dark room and have a lot of fun with it. And other times film is super frustrating and a lot of trial and error, a lot of hit and miss. That's probably why so many of us are drawn to it. As I mentioned, it's been a bit since I've made a video and uh, even longer since I've been doing it uh, routinely. Last summer I started working here at Lyft, which is an amazing artist resource, as I've said before and in some previous videos. Um, and it just it means kind of splitting my time a little bit more. Not that there's like a lack of ideas in my brain about things I'd like to do. It's just energy and time and also money. Thank you so much for watching this video and all of these videos. I, I've got a lot of stuff, as I said, in my brain, uh, a lot of opportunities to use and access stuff here at Lyft and also, um, you know, help to spread the word about not only Lyft as like a community artist resource in Toronto, but also get aware of the fact that you might live in a place where there are like obscure and niche artist resources. And you can find links in the description down below for Lyft if you live in Toronto. Great resource incredibly biased. Uh, you can also find ways to support the channel even though I have been less active. That support goes a really, really long way in uh, just being able to justify buying some of this film stuff. But even if you don't support the videos uh, through any sort of monetary way, uh, just watching them, sharing them around, subscribing, liking the videos, makes a big deal. Uh, especially when I'm inconsistent and YouTube as a platform doesn't love it inconsistency. So yes, analog resurgence. Thanks so much. Uh, I'll see you soon.